How's it going, goons? It is update day once again, and version 17 of the college football revamp mod has been released. We are a year removed from the big update that completely graphically uh, changed almost the entire game. And today we have some new, honestly, very cool graphics updates as well. Now, of course, there have been a few teams updated. Uh, a lot of the SEC has been um, updated once again with full uniforms. And then a lot of teams have gotten helmets. Uh, and a lot of teams have gotten socks. And then there's some general changes. But there's a few really, really big ones. Now, the first super big change is the scoreboard down at the bottom. Uh... Uh, it's such an incredible change. They have made this look almost exactly like the one that is used currently on ESPN. Um, and they did such a fantastic job in doing so. It goes all the way down to even being accurate with the play clock in the bottom right, having the team color and ticking down as the play clock starts to expire. So the fact that they were able to do that is absolutely phenomenal in my eyes. Uh, we'll just let CJ Verdell score a quick touchdown as uh, maybe we can start talking about the other thing. We are in the new Allegiant Stadium. Uh, somehow they managed to bring in a bunch of stadiums from Madden 17. So that's just another huge change and, and completely updates a few big things. Now this Allegiant Stadium that they're using... Uh, isn't the actual one, because obviously that was not around in when Madden 16 or Madden 17 came out. Uh, but this is a decent enough rendition of what it could look like. It's a big bowl stadium or a, a covered stadium. Uh, and UNLV would also use this just with UNLV graphics. But this is absolutely phenomenal. And alongside the new scoreboard update, they have this big... Uh, in between quarter graphic. I don't really know what the right word for it is, but it looks absolutely phenomenal. And again, just another big update to kind of modernize the look of the game. Now, alongside the uh, Allegiant Stadium, we have the AT&T Stadium. And I gotta say, this looks incredible. Uh, I'm doing all of this on first look completely blind, so my reactions are gonna be completely genuine. And let me just say, I am absolutely stunned at how fantastic this looks. I mean, especially as we come around to the big open window that ATMT Stadium has. This is awesome. This is so, so cool that they were able to get this done. Um, they have the giant video board as well, and it's working. Um, the end ones don't seem to be working, but nobody cares about the end ones because they're not 70 yards long. This is... I'm stunned at how incredible this is. This AT&T Stadium also in the game would be used for the Cotton Bowl uh, and the All-State kickoff. We also have Soldier Field added into the game as well as uh, a couple of other NFL ones that we'll take a look at. And this, again, looks just so phenomenal. I, I'm, I, I, I'm speechless. Look at just how beautiful these stadiums are this is so cool that they were able to do this we have arrowhead stadium complete with the unique video boards um again this looks pretty sick i don't think i'll ever truly understand how these geniuses figure out uh how to completely outdo themselves time and time again uh my goodness we have a beautiful Hard Rock Stadium for Miami. And once again, yeah, I'm going to continue to use this work because it continues to hold true. I'm stunned. I don't know if I thought uh, stuff like this was going to be ever possible. Uh, and I'm, I'm now curious to know what else can these guys manage to do because this is awesome. Continuing the theme... Uh, we have a few more of these to go through, but we have Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Not the Superdome, but the stadium in Atlanta. Um, I mean, if you look up, there's the giant video board ring that surrounds the whole thing, which is 
Looks a little bit wonky when we're looking at it from this perspective, but that's so cool. And like the uh, the kind of aperture opening and all the scaffolding. Uh, can we come over here and look outside a little bit? I mean, fantastic. Temple now has uh, an updated Lincoln Financial Field. Gosh, sorry, my camera works a little bit shoddy right now. But once again, uh, just so cool. All the smaller video boards off to the side with the giant one in the middle. Um, and I think, I don't know if it was like this before, but I know that there are a lot of uh, new, like, accurate ads. Uh, I think those might have been in place, but like over here we got a Bud Light ad that wouldn't have been in the base game, so... Uh, if that wasn't a part of it, and it is now, that's pretty sick. Lambo Field is available as well. Just such a classic. Um, I mean, perfect stage for the Minnesota-Wisconsin game, I think. Was it Paul Bunyan's axe or something like that? Um, Miller Lite ads, of course. <laughs> this one is pretty cool. And again, just like having the option... Uh, even if you're not playing in these fields frequently, having the option to come to a new stadium like this, especially one that, that is uh, updated in an NFL stadium and looks good and is a little bit more modern maybe in some cases, is such a fantastic feature. The penultimate update is for USC, or the penultimate stadium update is for USC in the Memorial Coliseum. Even something as simple as updating some of the 3D models really, I think, has a big impact uh, on how these stadiums look. Uh, I mean, the only thing that's missing from something like this is maybe a, a bit of a city background. But, I mean, this, uh, this end zone over here looks very, very cool now. And the Trojans... Oh, uh, well, they got uh, some nice new digs. The final big stadium change in this update is for USF South Florida playing in Raymond James Stadium. Uh, again, nice new digs. And you can tell that it is the actual one because you've got the, all the Buccaneers stuff over here. Um, I mean, just the fact that this is in it now is so phenomenal. I feel like I'm kind of beating a dead horse saying the exact same thing over and over again. But how can I help myself? This is uh, such an unexpected and cool update. The fact that they're able to go up to Madden 17 and pull stadiums from that is tremendous. Now, this being a college football revamped update means that it wouldn't be complete without some big uniform changes. So the team has started to go back through conferences to kind of re-update them uh, from what they had last done. So the SEC... Uh, is being redone first. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be uh, knowledgeable on every single new uniform change uh, from some of these teams. I think for Auburn, it had something to do with a face mask on a lot of it. Um, but with the additions that they were able to create with adding new helmets or helmet slots, so new teams get helmets, there's going to be a lot of those. For Auburn, it's nothing too crazy. But the more up-to-date it is, the more it feels like uh, a version of NCAA 22. LSU is up next. And again, I think for all of these SEC teams, I'm just going to go through the presets, uh, show off what they have uh, now. Uh, and, you know, if you are a big fan of the team or, or use them a ton in NCAA 14 or revamped, then you'll be able to know kind of the big changes I wish that I had a uh, more comprehensive knowledge of every team's uniform so I could notice the small details. But unfortunately, uh, my brain's just not quite big enough. Uh, for Mississippi State, they have some cool stuff. Uh, I really like some of the uniforms that Mississippi State has. Those Egg Bowl uniforms are really cool. Uh, the 19 ones, way more than the 20 ones. 21 is okay as well. Uh, TK Martin's pretty cool as well. Blackout, I'm always a fan, especially... When you just get rid of all your team colors completely. <laughs> but the Mississippi State has just a ton of different stuff that they can work with. So you always love that. Like, oh my goodness. It's just, uh, I mean, we could be scrolling here for a decade, it seems like. Missouri is next. Uh, the Tigers, again, I wish that I knew a little bit more for some of their stuff, but I'm just not quite there. I do really like their Top Gun one, um, but... 
Uh, just so many options. 2020 and 2021 ones all available. I mean, there's not a crazy difference between last year's and this year's, uh, but I do like the stripes more, I think. We'll close out the state of Mississippi with Ole Miss. The Rebels, man, oh, there's nothing I like more than a good powder blue. These are such fantastic uniforms that they have. The 1960 throwback is uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, pretty much the same as the alternate one. Just a slight change. So Ole Miss gets, honestly, uh, big praises for me. Uh, maybe one of my favorite SEC team uniforms. The Vols also updated in this one. I've enjoyed a lot of the uh, uniforms that they have. I, I like the smoky grays that Tennessee has, especially with the kind of the checkered board, like the end zone down on the pant leg. Um, gotta say, not a huge fan of that black one, but some of their alternates work really well. And they have some old uniforms thrown in as well, just as a nice ability to mix things up. The penultimate team in the SEC for this update is Texas A&M. The Aggies have some nice throwbacks. I do like that uh, throwback helmet. That T is ginormous. It's the size of Texas itself. <laughs> but uh, just uh, every little uh, throwback or, or additional alternate that they can add onto these is fantastic. Especially because... Uh, for someone like me, when you're trying to decide uh, what school you're going to do for a dynasty, I'll tell you what, it certainly helps having as many options for uniforms as possible. Vanderbilt is the final team in this update. They, uh, kind of a plain uniform in my opinion. The battle ready helmet is really cool though. Uh, the 2020 uniforms may be a little bit better just because, you know, it fits a little bit better. The Nashville skyline is super cool as well. So uh, they've done, I don't know, they've done a good job. Vanderbilt looks cool. Uh, honestly, they're a pretty solid team, I think, for a pick. Just they have so many options because now you start to get into all the alternates. And they're not a great team, so you would actually have to do a little bit of a rebuild. But unfortunately, if you thought that was me kind of leaning into something, we won't be choosing Vanderbilt anytime soon. Helmets have also been updated for about half a million teams. Um... I guess I could just read them out because I don't think we'll go through all of them. There is one that I want to take a look at, but the list, let me take a deep breath here, is Alabama, Clemson, Coastal Carolina, Colorado, Colorado State, Fresno State, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Iowa State, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Northwestern, Old Dominion, Pitt, Purdue, San Jose State, South Carolina, Texas, Tulane, UAB, Virginia, Virginia Tech, and Washington State. <gasps> Uh, a lot of teams getting new helmets, and I think a lot of teams have gained a ton of helmets. Now, one that I really wish that we had uh, when we were with them, with the Teal Boys, is this helmet that they get. I'm assuming it's what I think it is. We had the black and white, but, uh, oh gosh, it just froze on me? Uh-oh, I can change things? Oh, well, I guess I gotta re restart my, my uh, RPCS3 here. All right, let's see if it works this time. Coastal, change uniform. They have helmets. Can we see them? The teal helmet is the one that I wanted. Uh, obviously, the shoes have kind of loaded in uh, incorrectly here. Can I just change that to white so it's not so distracting? But that teal helmet, it came out or they used it this season. And all I could think about was how incredible it would have been if we could have used it when we were the teal boys. This all teal look is phenomenal. Uh, and I don't think we had this available to us either, but the USA helmet where it's the uh, Shant logo, except red, white, and blue. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, alongside that, there's also the one that says Shant's, which is, uh, again, just cool. And the more options you have, the better. And it sounds like there's about half a million options that can be thrown in. So uh, it just froze again when I went to the white helmet. So uh, I would recommend avoiding... Uh, trying to put Coastal Carolina in their white helmet for now because it seems like it's frozen my game, but I'm certain that'll be uh, hot fixed pretty soon. Again, I won't go through uh, and look at every single helmet that's been added because that would take about three hours, but I do know that the Cougs got a ton of them. So we'll just go through the list because they have a lot to begin with. So now we get more. They have the gray, they have the crimson, they have the white kind of standard. And then you have the script one where it says Cougars in cursive. There's the gray and white version. There's the anthracite alternate. There's the white and anthracite, the crimson alternate, the white alternate, the normal anthracite, 
uh, and then we get back to the gray. It's just crazy how many options can be available, and it again, it opens things up. I, the only thing I wish from Eastern is that we just had more options. If you're watching this and you're in charge of the uniforms at Eastern Michigan, just like for me, if you could create a couple of crazy alternates so that the CFB revamp team would be forced to include them into the game, that would be pretty cool. Other than the helmets, though, uh, some socks have been updated for teams. So Akron, Cal, ECU, unfortunately not us, but Nitro drives team. Uh, Florida, Middle Tennessee State, Navy, Rice, Syracuse, Toledo, UCLA, USF, UTSA, and Washington also all got new socks. The number positioning for Georgia was completed as well, as was uh, some number positioning on Colorado State's uniforms. And then to finish it all off, there were some updated fields for uh, the Louisiana Bowl, Boise State, the Military Bowl, the First Responder Bowl, Hawaii, and the Hawaii Bowl, the Good Sam Houston Kickoff, the Independence Bowl, the Guaranteed Rate Bowl, the MAC Conference Championship game, which is a shame that we literally just played that. Uh, but then there's the Lending Tree Bowl, the Quick Lane Bowl, the New Mexico Bowl, San Jose State's uh, field, the Gasparilla Bowl, Texas, and Utah. All in all, an absolutely phenomenal update. Those scoreboard changes are going to just continue to blow me away. They kind of previewed them last night on the Barstool stream. And while I had already put out two videos yesterday, I was just in the mood to keep recording, but I had to tell myself not to. I had to hold back so that we could get as many games as possible with the awesome new scoreboards. Again, though, thank you so much to the college football revamped team. There have been 17 updates now to this mod, and they haven't missed on a single one of them. So all credit goes to those guys for making such a fantastic piece of work. If you guys are looking to get this update, again, you can go to cfbrevamp.com or go to the College Football Revamp Twitter account, and they have links there. Uh, there's also the College Football Revamped Discord, where there's links for that, as well as places to report bugs or, or get help with either installing it or using maybe the utility tool or the playoff tool or the play creator. It's just so insane to me that there are so many things that they've done. And then the fact now that they're able to pull in models from a different game is mind boggling to me. Unfortunately, that is going to have to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to hit the like button. And if you want to be notified uh, when new update videos come out, or maybe when our Eastern Michigan series comes out, feel free to subscribe as well. After you've done both of those, head down to the description where you can find links to not only all the college football revamp stuff, but my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links to my Twitter and our community Discord as well. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the goons, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.